ladies and gentlemen, friends and admirers of uh, Percival Narona, Percival Narona as he calls himself. So, uh, thank you all for coming. Even in this pouring rain, I thought at the last minute we probably have three or four people, but we have a full contingent of almost 40 people who had uh, registered themselves. So thank you all for coming for this uh, little observance that we are having to commemorate uh, uh, Petrava Naranya's uh, birth centenary, which actually falls tomorrow. But we are having it on the eve of the centenary. So, uh, you know, uh, Petrava was, I think, a uh, Renaissance man in the finest sense of the term. Because he was a, a, a historian, an author, an administrator, a connoisseur of uh, Goan culture, a passionate conserver of uh, Goan heritage, an amateur astronomer, and more than anything, he was a very fine person, a good man, a loyal friend, a loving cousin, a doting uncle, and uh, it is only fitting that we celebrate his centenary. It is not by any mistake that when uh, Goa had the, 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 the big Serendipity Festival the first time, uh, and uh, Solomon Sosa was asked to select a few icons and paint them in various parts of Goa, uh, the, the icon in Fontaine was of, of uh, Percival. And that really is a mark of, the, of, the, of his contribution to, to Goa. And uh, well, the centenary falls in the monsoon, so we had it today. And they say that when, you know, when, when, when it rains a lot, it's also a sign of good luck. Good luck. So, yes. so fine, all of you have turned up over here. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, before I ask uh, Shamika to uh, welcome all of you on behalf of Alliance Francaise, which has so kindly agreed to host this function on the ground floor of Agenor, the house where uh, Percival lived, uh, named after his father, I think AJ Corona was his father, so that's how Agenor was made. Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, about, about Percy's life. Uh, he was born in Margaon, a hundred years ago, less one day. And then he went to the, he was educated in the Liceo. He did his schooling in the Portuguese medium. And when he finished school, uh, his father sent him to, to, to Belgaum to do his pre-university course. So he did his PUC in Belgaum and then got admission to the very prestigious Ferguson College in Pune, where he did his BSc in physics. Now, I always thought that he did it in you know, history or something, but no, it was in physics that he was a graduate in. And he finished that and then came back to, to Goa and got a kind of a temporary assistance job in, uh, in, in the PWD. Uh, then he studied for and sat for the competitive examinations to the Goa Civil Service. He was successful in that. He was selected to the Civil Service and his first formal appointment was in the Department of Statistics. <laughs> but uh, very soon his talent was recognized and it was realized that you know, he'd be much better in another department. And he was picked up and transferred to the Department of uh, Information and Tourism, where he spent most of his career, picking up a lot of expertise along the way, um, and uh, actually rising to the top in the Department of Information. And as he rose higher, he was transferred and finally, he retired in 1981 as a director of administration, again in the PWD, where he had coincidentally begun his, uh, his career. But in those days, people retired at the age of 58. But uh, 58 was too young for, uh, for uh, Percival to retire. And in the almost 35 years, 40 years after that, he had contributed so much writing, Speaking, he was invited to give lectures in India, abroad, 
on Goan history, Goan culture, and he was so passionate about all these things. All of you who know him, who have met him so many times, have realized the passion and the devotion with which he spoke about these things, which he wrote about these things, and the expertise that he collected along the way about these things. So this is what we've got together to, to, to celebrate. And thank you all, therefore, for coming. I will now invite, uh, before, I must also thank our, our sponsors for this evening, uh, which are uh, Inabo Chocolates, not watering already, <laughs> Kotomi Reserve, and uh, Adinko Distilleries. They are our sponsors for this evening. And I, uh, I thank them all on behalf of you, and you can partake of their their uh, uh, generosity after this. But we are also, as I said, very grateful to Alliance Francaise. And so I will invite Shamika, who is a teacher and the head of development over here, to welcome all of you on behalf of Alliance Francaise. Thank you, Nathalie And thank you all of you for coming here this evening on a rainy day. In fact, it is our honor to be situated in Festival uh, Aronia's house and to have this program. It is a house of a revered figure in Goa for his outstanding contribution, as you mentioned, in history, literature, astronomy, a house that has a heart and a soul. The Alliance Française has taken up the mission to preserve and promote <coughs> Franco Lusso Goan distinctiveness and heritage through our language and cultural outreach. This is one of our ways to pay homage to Pasupil Narona. Thank you once again for coming and we do hope to see you for the other sessions that we'll talk about later. Thank you, Shavita. I now invite uh, Mushalo Loom, uh, known by so many names, Francis Loom Pereira, who is uh, uh, Festival Naronia's nephew and godson to say a few words. First of all, I would like to apologize for permitting me to see it because the after effects of COVID that I got recently off season has taken a toll on me. So I hope you will forgive me for sitting down and speaking. Do you know have given me two, three minutes but as I went on penning a few lines over here, I, I thought it might exceed those two minutes. So it again, my advance apologies. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, honestly, I must confess that asking, you know, ask me to speak something, but I feel like a fish out of water because. I have not meant for public speaking. I haven't done it before, so to say. But uh, not even when I was in school. These are tasks best done by what they call the three P's. Professors, priests or politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Professors are accustomed to do lecture to their students in an effort, in an effort to contain their growing fund of ignorance. Priests are used to pontificate day in and day out at rituals with the hope that they will change people to the better, but meeting with little success. And politicians generally have the unique ability to speak through their head on any and all subjects with hardly any competence. I have never been a fiction other of letters, and the so-called flowers of rhetoric never spread their fragrance in my mental environment. As most of you present here know well, my uncle was a very unique person. A personality that he could perhaps develop out of the virtues of bachelorhood. <laughs> my memories of him date back to my early childhood when as, as a one and a half year old I came to live with him and my grandparents in this house after the untimely death of my mother, his sister. I can recall him when there was a tiny dot, when he was perhaps 30 nothing. He used to, he, after coming back from work, he was 
always busy reading, most reading without fail to the background of classical music. And uh, uh, at times he used to strum a violin, uh, not violin, a uh, mandolin that he had. And at times also fiddling with my mother's violin. As long as I can remember, he strictly followed the principle. Knowledge is knowing that to find it. And in pursuit of this principle, he avidly began collecting books. And that's what, that's how he used to bank his money. The most cherished memory that I have of him was when he was 10 and a half or 11 years old. He had a brand new Volkswagen car. And I requested him to allow me to drive. So he looked at me thinking that this was a crazy childish request. And we went for a drive to Biramar. And on the way back, that where Benjim Jimkhana is today situated, it used to be called Padutkar Brown. It was an open ground. So he took the car uh, out of the main road and went to the ground. And he said, Raunakyat Diyat, really do you want to drive? I said, yes. So he sat on, made me sit, and I sat, he sat on the side. And he was really shocked when he saw that I drive perfectly. I passed the test with that long. And uh, he, after he, we came home, he was thrilled to tell my grandparents. And my grandfather was fuming. <laughs> and uh, he says, you will see, one day he is going to bang the car somewhere. And he said, anyway, said let us see. <laughs> so, Thereafter, you know, the, the interesting part was that after that time, after that episode, my grandparents had a funny habit, a habit of after dinner, driving to Miramar and sitting there, gossiping with their friends. You know, I think that was a past time those days. And uh, of course, Miramar Beach was nicely and good benches and all the time. And uh, from that time, that night, uh, for that after dinner drive to Miranda, I became a juvenile lawbreaker as their nighttime driver. So anyway, it was good experience. No, Percival was a workaholic. You can call him as such. And I recall occasions when I saw him work 24 by 7 to accomplish the tasks. I remember words of uh, uh, his, his director when he was in information and tourism. He was one of the Anton Martin Brooks. He used to say, when Percival undertakes a task, it seems to, he seems to ex exclaim, I may die writing this job. So uh, that was how he approached everything. In sometime in 1958, he was he was, uh, everyone was surprised when he single-handedly organized a book fair at the Benjamin Municipal Garden. It used to be called Fair of the But he had the full support of the then governor called General Vasal Silva, who, who gave him full backing. And not only that, he even specially came home to thank him for having done the job very well. And uh, the exhibition lasted for over a month and people from all over Goa had come to visit the book uh, despite the limited transport facilities of those days. I remember having a bad one fellow from Khan Khan, Khan who had come to see just the book fair and Bessie brought him home to sleep that night. Yeah. Then, uh, The second occasion that I can remember well is the retreat of the Commonwealth Aids of State. 
when he was entrusted by the then uh, Lieutenant Governor of Goa, uh, K.T. Satanamala, if I'm not mistaken, was his name. And he, had, he was entrusted to train all guides who would accompany those heads of state on their visit to Old Goa and the temples, etc. So he had to prepare a lot of that uh, material for them to, for the guides to uh, read, etc. The one who's <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing to say that, but uh, whenever I used to come to Beijing, uh, I used to see festivals around them. There's so many pretty girls, uh, all aspiring to be uh, guides. That time. I used to feel quite jealous of him. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thereafter he had to train those guides and then shortlist them as to the, to the required number of people that uh, was uh, necessary. Uh, the third occasion was the visit of the Pope to go in 1986. When uh, he, the Archdiocese of Goa inducted him in the committee for preparations of the Pope's visit. And one day when I happened to be here, the chairman of the organizing committee, that committee was one of the father, Alvin Bissouza by name. He and another priest came here, all agitated and all, because they didn't know which chair to use for the Pope to use the function and the people must. So he tells them, go and take rest, don't bother. So I'm wondering what this guy is uh, talking about. So he immediately uh, took me along with him and we went to Pomurpa, to the Pomurpa church, because he remembered in his childhood, my grandparents uh, used to take him to the Pomurpa spring for bath. Uh, so he remembered that when on a Sunday when they used to go for mass, he remembered the chair that was being used, uh, the green chair and the, uh, by the priest. So he went and asked the parish priest, uh, he says, where is that chair? The parish priest didn't know anything about the chair. So he said, no, 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 there is a chair here. He said. So he called that, what they call, uh, Shadow, what is that fellow uh, who? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Texter. Yeah, Texter. Yeah, Texter. So uh, they called him and asked him, did we have a chair like that, that uh, some special chair? So he says, I don't know, but I will go on the Bado and check on the attic. So he went, he did not know exactly. So my uncle sent me on top also. Then I immediately realized that this must be the one. But it, it was all dismembered. In, uh, legs were uh, in one place, arms in another place. And, and the back went also. Sorry. And uh, uh, so he told the patch priest, this is the chair. I need to take it for the Pope. When Paris Priest heard Pope, he was wondering how can this broken chair be used by the Pope? So he put the pieces of members, um, like rest and the seat and all that, in the back, back seat of his Pope's car uh, and brought them there in the garage here. And then he organized the carpenter and some other fellows to work on that chair day and night, restored the full thing including the cleaning work and all that. And the trouble was there were all the twelve apostles of Christ were on the hands of the sick rest. So those were a bit disfigured. So he went to some paint shop, bought small tins of paint. And every night he used to sit to touch up those things to recreate those 12 apostles on the sea rest. <coughs> but the best part of it was when the Pope climbed the stage at Kampal, 
of the master. He noticed the chair and he took a few seconds to just look at it for a while. And then he began his mass. So, uh, and he told the Archbishop that time, he says, I am very impressed with the chair. So, two days later, then the Bishop came here to this house to, to present the principal with a medal for having contributed for the see, He mentioned that this is what the Pope said. So, he says, see, and now the chair is restored. You all please don't take it to Bishop House. I want to return it to Kukupa Church. So that's where it belongs. So he made sure that it was returned and told the parish priest, take this chair and you can tell everyone that the Pope used this chair. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. now the embarrassing moment for me. A little word on my behalf. I need to, one thing I need to do is to really thank my wife for all her efforts in keeping him going. But for her, he would perhaps be long gone. In that sense, I remember my grandmother, that's Bessival's mother. For, for she is the one who actually chose my wife and imposed her on me. <laughs> I didn't even know her. So, <laughs> but I couldn't say no to her because she's the one who brought me up. So, uh, anyway, it turned out good. Then, but not here to just hear you. Turned out good. Turned out very good. But. Anything he, my grandfather, probably had an intuition that probably only my wife would be able to take care of Percival in his old age. Because sir, she knew how difficult he could be. And in fact, indeed, he was. He would not listen to anything when we told him to come and live with us. And he said, No, I am not incapacitated. I can live on my own. And this. Same night he fell down and broke his hip bone. So, after that, he had no option because we literally from the hospital, we directly took take to, to my house. And of course, my wife got subjected to quite a bit of meeting from him because she had become difficult to, to manage by the time. Couldn't take his medicines and this and that and the other. Anyway, finally, and I want to make a mention of the great, his greatest contribution to society. That is the establishing the Association of Friends of Astronomy and later the public astronomical observatory on top of Junta House with the support of the government then. But as far as the Association of Astronomy is concerned, he worked day and night. It was a passion. And uh, he he nurtured it so well and produced so many young students who had joined as members of the astronomy and uh, uh, and some more but it's still uh, I think we put the gun paper whether they're still getting more members or so more are still getting born. And those who are now young adults and not around used to keep contacting him on phone or visiting him whenever he go up, for he was their inspiration. Whenever I meet with him and his members visit him, I get an impression that there is a deity in him burning within that brings fire that ignites their inspiration for a better understanding of our universe. His, his achievements have built an unseen monument in their minds that will endure till the sun grows cold. May their tribe increase. I join this great family of questing astronomers in praying for Percival that he may always inspire them to take forward his legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, for those very interesting anecdotes that you gave us, bringing a new light on uh, uh, Percival Nalonya.
I invite now Keta Pandit to say a few words. Keta has just released her 11th book <laughs> and uh, Keta's contribution to the conservation of Goan heritage is, you know, uh, unrepayable. Uh, Keta came to Goa 20 years ago, I don't know. 28 years ago. And Keta is more, more Goan than, than most people born in Goa. And, uh, I request her to share with me. Thank you, Chibu, and thank you, uh, Radha. Thank you, Shamika, and uh, Alliance Francais for inviting me here to speak. I'll just say a few words for two minutes exactly. I was asked by Gerard de Cunha in sometime in 1996-97 to do the book Houses of Goa. I was absolutely new, squeaky new to Goa. I couldn't even pronounce names properly. And I went to the archives and I was reading up whatever I could lay my hands on. And Father Nasiment Mashkar English was also on the next table. After two or three days, he came quietly to me and girl, what are you exactly doing? Why are you looking at all these old books? So I told him I was uh, working on a book on houses of Goa and he said, then you must meet Percival Noronha. I couldn't even pronounce his name at that time. I was so squeakingly new to Goa, but Percival embraced me, literally. He said, whatever you want to know, whatever questions, a long list of questions I used to take to him and he would give me answers to whatever I asked him. Of all the things I learned, I learned a lot from him. Till the book was published and I took it to him, the final manuscript in 1998. I learned a lot, but there were two things that I want to share with you that I learned from him. One is that when you write an acknowledgement and you thank people for helping you on a book or any project, make sure that person has given you permission to thank them. Don't just write, oh, I thank Percival Noronia. So that is one thing I, I have taken with me right through the 11 books that I have learned. And the other thing I learned from Percival was how to share. <clears throat> he used to share his knowledge freely, generously. And he taught me that. And I have in turn shared my knowledge with so many people. I have lost count. So that is one thing I owe to him. So Percival, I won't say we miss you. You're always there. Thank you, Rita. I have now asked Frederick Narona. He shares a surname with, uh, with, with Percival, but he also shares that great passion for Goa and does, I don't know, how many WhatsApp groups and internet uh, and, and, and email groups that he runs, uh, all Goa-centric. So I'll ask uh, Rico to uh, very briefly, again, two minutes, one joke and one request. So the joke is this, it's not a joke actually, it's quite serious. So the first time I met Percival, uh, he asked me, you're Noronia, sorry, you're Noronia, where are you from? So this was in the 80s when, you know, we didn't wear our religion and our ethnic origin on our sleeves. It was considered to be in bad taste. And I was in my militant secular phase in those days, so I refused to tell him. I heed and hawed for about, he gave me about 20 or 30 minutes, sorry, 20 or 30 seconds, and then he immediately said, oh, you must be a Mangalorean, he said. So, <laughs> so, of course, and in those days, I was working for the Deccan Herald, and I remember I was meeting him for the first time up here, so that was how it went, and uh, as Lucio, Professor Lucio Rodriguez says, if you are trying to think where I'm from, please don't think, because that will confuse you further. So that was our first encounter with Percival. I mean, it's not it's not a criticism. It's normal for anyone to want to to understand you and where you're coming from. But I refused to tell him, and we had a very good equation. I remember him through all my photos because, as you know, I'm the kind of guy who keeps photographing people without their permission. And his photos are all over the place, including some old photos from the 80s where he was guiding the Goa Association of Photographers, one small group which we had, and telling us about different things in Panjim. Uh, you know, showing us the place and all that. Interactions, we had n number of interactions with him. He was the go-to guy for anything on heritage. And he would always also, apart from sharing his knowledge, he would make sure it was public. 
he was a public intellectual, as the fashionable term says, today says. No? He would make sure that it was in the news, that people understood heritage issues and all this. And of course, to end, uh, a few years before he passed away, I caught hold of him and he was telling me some interesting stories and I whipped out my uh, tape recorder, again without permission, and I don't give people a chance to say no. So we recorded him and some of the things he says, they are think, you know, I'm telling you this, but don't record it. I'm telling him, Mr. Noronya, I'm recording it. So anyway, it's on the record. And he gave a good insight because he was one of the few bureaucrats who, tran who transitioned from the colonial times to post-61 and all that. So it's fascinating. And, and with that, you know, I want to end with a request. See, these people, history is passing away from us as we talk. And it's just going away. So we need to document all this. And I'm so grateful to hear Mr. Loom Pereira's stories because I was not aware that he had he was involved in the affair of the Negroes because we heard so much about it, although it was way before our time. And uh, we need to record these things, we need to note it down, we need oral history archiving. You know, this Goa is such a rich place, but not enough is happening on that. So just think about it, you know, keep it in your mind. There are so many people from the world of history here who can make a difference. It doesn't take for much, it takes for one small recorder or one small audio recorder like this thing, you know, and that's all. So just that. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. I'll now invite uh, Vivek Menezes, writer, journalist, photographer, to pay his tribute to Pesela. Lovely to be here. It's so lovely. Uh, you know, it's 100 years, and we are all here for Percival in the way that I think is so appropriate. So his his his, his legacy is super. Uh, I would say relevant, and it, it's wonderful. That makes a, a wonderful thing um, for us to be participating in. Um, what I loved about Percival. So I arrived not unlike Heta actually. Um, what happened with uh, Percival is. At the time when I was kind of in Goa and thinking about what it is, how Goa is going to be in, in the coming years, um, he was one a very unusual individual because he was someone who was living an authentic life of the mind. Um, he was someone who had this great, great depth of knowledge, but unlike so many of the other people I was dealing with, he was he, there was an absence of rancor and there was a great grace to the way he spanned these eras, these uh, you know various aspects of our culture which I found uh, super attractive. So his home turned out to be like a cosmopolitan little oasis. And many, many times, I'm so grateful to his nephew who allowed me to go out there today and take a look at it. Um, because many, many times, and perhaps sometimes inappropriately also, when I was walking by, I knocked on the door and he would come to the window and, and drop the keys down. And I went there many times. Uh, once I took uh, Orhan Pamuk there, the Nobel Prize winner, and he was uh, along with Kiran Desai, Booker Prize winner. And we spent an hour there, and it was just, you know, it was just the conversation was a light. Um, another time we took, I took Amitav Ghosh there, and Amitav has actually got a very beautiful blog post about visiting Persiva and the kind of histories that that uh, brought up. Um, I think there is a kind of a memorial element to this also, so I, I thought about it, and what I would like to do is, one of the things that Percival shares with me and uh, with Tino also, of course, I think it's the same thing, is that we are both, we are all islanders and with a connection to Bivar. So, in the, in the spirit of a memorial, I'm going to do a reading from Armando Menezes, which is about uh, Goan personality, it's about, it's called Rivers, and I was thinking about it, I actually didn't, I brought this along for Tino, um, I wasn't sure I was going to do it, but in, in hearing what they said about Percival, what it was said about Percival, if you don't mind, indulge me for a few minutes of reading of Rivers by Armando Menezes. I think this is in the in the 50s. The Goan landscape has, at all times, something of this curious quality of freshness, of something born again and again, and at the same time of something that might at any moment cease to be. Its beauty is never static, it is rather a continuous movement in beauty, a beauty happening afresh each season, each day, each instant. This is also the quality that distinguishes the Goan temperament, the Goan consciousness from all others. It cannot be reduced to a type, it cannot be fitted into a ready mold, 
or comfortably, comfortably shelved, shelved into a pigeonhole. It is fluid, with the fluidity of all plastic things. Without being either volatile or amorphous, it is in its profoundest essence unpredictable. A certain negative capability is at the root of its astonishing versatility. It would be an interesting question how much of this temperament has been influenced by the visual environment, or whether in some mysterious way the temperament has influenced the visual scene. In any case, there is a shimmery quality of the Goan personality, which is also the quality of its scenery. Coming down the meandering Ghat road, one sees the valley spreading below through a haze which silvers its innumerable greens. Every bend of the road is at once a crisis in your life and an artistic revelation. One is caught inescapably in a pattern of curves. One curves up and down, one curves sideways around spurs of hills and ancient walls, one curves along margins of rivers, until it suddenly strikes you that the curve is the flow of the beauty that is Goa, and the river is perfect symbol. And this river is more than a feature of the Goan scenery, it is a law of life for the Goan. And if you happen to be born within sight of a river, and how many of us have been, or born and bred on the island, on an island as I was, the river runs in your veins as if it were your very heart's blood. Then it is not something that you go, that you see and go on to drink in its beauty. It is something you have to cross, an element which protects as well as inhibits, a limitation but also a challenge. A mere robo slapping gently in the lapping wash appears to be her vehicle of infinite adventure. A tattered sail vanishing around the river bend becomes a carrier of your wildest dreams. It is a mistake to think being born and bred on an island makes you insular. The very opposite is the truth, provided the island is not too big, so that the river is ever within sight. What seeps into your nature is not the freakish outcrop made of rocks and silk on which you stand, it is the river that insinuates it's in itself into you. I am using the big word of set purpose, for the river with its sinuosity, its curvaceous flow, has a way of worming itself into your system as the solid earth cannot. In more senses than one, the river holds you bound. And this bond carries with it, as it were, a spring of release. For the river that goes around your home is also the river that winds away from it, curves around the bend towards the sea. If it is true that the river hems you in, it is equally true that it opens up horizons for your mind. Like all true things, it is a window beyond itself. How much of the life of Goa is wound up with rivers? The dikes and buns which gird our paddy, paddy fields bear witness along with many river locks to the preoccupation of our ancestors with the problem of keeping the river out as well as of taking the river in. And then there are the fish. The Goan has two universal characteristics. He speaks company and he eats fish. Watch the fisherman laying his nets outside the river locks or right across the creek. Watch his wife and daughter with their dresses tucked up, wade knee deep in search of cockles or other mussels. Watch him push his boat off out into the wide ocean to come back only the next morning and drag up his net laden with leaping and darting silver. Watch him perched in a solitary spot with his rod and line, hooked with an earthworm or a little shrimp. When I was young, one traveled long distance by donk sorry, when I was young, one traveled long distances by boat and ate and slept with the nostalgic creaking of its oars, making puddles of white foam shot with phosphorescent light. Today, in a time of accelerated motor traffic, the river is no longer an arterial route, at least, no, at least no longer popular. However, ugly monsters of barges steam down our rivers, carrying our rich iron ore, and steam up again in search of more. Little canoes still ferry people across them in many parts. We have bridged some of them, and we are going to bridge some more. But the rivers sometimes have taken their quiet revenge, as if to remind us that rivers are meant to be challenged, but not to be ignored. And then there are those other rivers, those many secret rivers, which like the legendary Saraswati, flow underground. The many streams of culture that have flowed into the sacred land of ours have flowed into our blood. They include the invisible, the ever-winding river, which is our history, over which navies have plied and armies trampled, which has seen conquest and defeat, bigotry and the clear light of the spirit, tyranny and freedom, glory and shame, yet flowed limpidly down the channel of time, making us what we are and what we should be, with its multitudinous and never-ceasing flow, the personality of a people, the destiny of a tiny land. Thank you, thank you, Vic, uh, for your 
tributes and also for reading out this lyrical passage from uh, your grandfather's essay. It seems that your family produces a major writer in every generation. <laughs> Arman Menezes, your uncle George, and this generation you. <laughs> uh, I now invite uh, Professor Rajal Sakhatende to say a few words. He is the, an authority on, on, on Goa. I know when I had a question and I rang up uh, Heta about that question and she said, I'll give you Prajal's number, you ask Prajal about it, and he'll tell you, and then I rang up Prajal about that, and then he gave me his view on that. So, I invite Prajal Sakhatandi. I would greet you by saying both are, because uh, Sir, uh, as I called him, was very fond of the Portuguese language. And my first brush with the man was when I was a student uh, doing, pursuing my master's in history at the Goa University, and our professor, Dr. Pratima Kamath, had invited him to talk to us. And then I found this man was an encyclopedia. Uh, he took us to Old Goa and he knew each and everything of Old Goa. He, he pointed out to the site from where Afaz de Albuquerque entered Goa on uh, 1st March 1510. He pointed out the stones, the laterite stone, so which I do with my students now. So it was a learning process. I learned a lot from the man. Uh, then um, the chair which he, he mentioned about the Pope. I did not know that Sir was involved in its preservation. But I had taken my students to see that chair where the Pope sat on 6th February 1986. It's a very beautiful chair actually. It looks very beautiful, the red color, and it's just below the altar of my the Dev Church in Pomurpa. So then after that, uh, we wanted to save this Casa uh, de uh, Polvora, that is a gunpowder factory in Raibandar. And uh, we started with our campaign, we wanted to save it and all that. And there were 11 uh, millstones, gunpowder millstones there. And uh, to save it, we needed the history. And uh, at that point of time, I was not aware, you know, when that gunpowder factory was built in Aibandar. So I, the only alternate for me was to come to Sir and I, Sir, I said, I need to know the date. And believe me, immediately he searched for his books and he showed me a passage wherein the mention of Casa de Polora in the date 1630 was written. So I took that information and I wrote to the Chief Secretary and we were able successfully to save the Casa de Polora site and today those millstones are displayed in the ASI Museum in the um, State Archive, this uh, ASI Museum in Old Goa. There are so many memories of the man, so whenever we wanted to refer to anything and whenever I made a mistake in my articles, he used to call me up and write a letter also. He used to write a letter and once he came to the college with a letter saying the Antium Bhagavad the Sarkana and he used to laugh, you know. And I found it very witty, you know, and he was very uh, and lovely it was. So my interactions with have been with manifold and in fact we thank on behalf of the Goa Heritage Action Group, Heta and I should thank him for so many of the sites and monuments that we were able to salvage due to his intervention also. They were able. Thank you so much, Prajal, uh, for sharing those uh, uh, experiences. Uh, as you know, uh, Percival Naronya was uh, instrumental, was actually the founder of the Friends of Astronomy. He was a passionate uh, astronomer, uh, amateur astronomer. And so I'll invite uh, Govind Potekar, uh, journalist and uh, now a very active uh, member of the Friends of Astronomy. Or, what It's called Friends of Astronomy. Mm -hmm. I have also to like to thank uh, uh, the organizers, Mr. Uh, Pereira and Mr. Bissau and Alliance Francis. And this is something I normally don't do, actually talking to people, like uh, addressing. And I, some, something, uh, before I say something about astronomy, I think, uh, something I learned from Mr. Uh, Sir uh, Narona. Uh, other day, actually, when I spoke to one of my friends, uh, college friend, he said, uh, the only topic that uh, we hear about uh, pandemic these days is uh, water logging and roads, right? I said uh, Panchim has become a forbidden city. And the moment I said that, he said, you have put the right word actually. Uh, because uh, Panchim was something that was such a planned city, it has become an unplanned city uh, as of now. Today. And uh, this is uh, something uh, that bothers everyone there. Uh, other thing, uh, when it comes to astronomy, like, I think uh, I have my association with uh, uh, contact with uh, uh, Sir uh, started sometime in 95. 
and it opened up a new vistas for uh, young members uh, who join astronomy uh, uh, club at uh, that observatory. And it gave us the opportunity to meet so many people, galaxies of people from different walks of life. And some scientists, uh, some amateurs coming from all over the place. And one of the top uh, scientists, Indian scientists who used to regularly visit him was uh, Dr. Jan Nalikar. The observatory has actually has given so, so many uh, opportunities to uh, young members like that and we have done exceptionally well at international level also. Uh, one of our members was uh, in the team which discovered the furthermost, furthermost uh, galaxy in the uh, uh, universe, like, uh, some 13 uh, billion light years away. Uh, another one of our members, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Sachin Sharai, is working on in interstellar dust. Uh, so, uh, he is working for NASA actually. So these are uh, one, two of the members who have done exceptional well. And one of our members also, uh, uh, although he is not into astronomy, uh, he has done uh, uh, documentation of all the astronomy observatories in India. Uh, film documentation, Rakesh Rao. He had the opportunity to uh, visit Antarctica uh, four times, uh, which is uh, one exceptional thing what he has, uh, actually what uh, our members have done. Like. Astronomy is one subject, actually, I should say, with, uh, we have to thank uh, Sir for studying the I mean, uh, association and subsequently the observatory in Goa. Right? Because whatever, like uh, astronomy, uh, now Goa has taken a lead, actually, when it comes to the astronomical subject. Uh, Goa has become the first uh, uh, state in the country where we have offered a subject at uh, school level. Uh, which is uh, for the first time which has happened. Like, and we are in the course of, uh, I think, we are studying the course for the UN for the uh, higher secondary level. So this is uh, one of the achievement uh, which uh, we have achieved actually uh, with small mem uh, uh, small members actually who are very active. Although the uh, number of members have grown over the years. Like, okay. So uh, I must thank uh, Mr. Noro for giving such a great opportunity. And it is not the, uh, just astronomy, like uh, over the years, like uh, whenever I visited uh, his place, like uh, his to moment I was inside, like uh, I think you, you people know so much of experience, he used to call uh, Maushi, Maushi Govindak Sukh uh, Dev okay? And moment I used to, I used to hear that, I used to tell him, oh, Maushi don't drink soup, uh, tea is okay for me. And Kaitan and Maushi, they were, uh, he used to always tell us, that uh, he will never get anyone uh, such uh, assistant like uh, Moshi and Kaitan who were so dedicated to uh, 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 him like all these years. Before actually, uh, one th uh, I wanted to uh, say one thing but uh, maybe uh, uh, I will say uh, uh, some of the time now. Okay. And thanks for uh, once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Now, uh, before we throw open the, uh, the, the, the stage for anyone from the house to come and say what they want, I will invite uh, Dr. Anuradha Varley to speak. She was going to speak earlier, but I think she got delayed because of the rain. She is the president of the Alliance Francaise, where we are all gathered for this. So, Dr. Anuradha Varley. Good evening to all. It was wonderful listening to all these delightful, heartwarming stories from uh, all the people who are associated with Esmeralda. And we have, uh, you know, uh, I don't hold the same kind of memories that you have because I was I just met him a couple of times. Uh, and of course, when we took the children of the family to the terrace of Jutta House to look through the telescope. And that was, but that was a very, very, uh, you know, that's a memory which even our children hold today. And I'm grateful to him for having uh, given them this opportunity. Uh, but after this, I mean, I, you, you all know that uh, we were, we are, we've been, uh, you know, in the house of Persaban Narona since March. And I'm extremely grateful to the family of Persaban Narona for having allowed us to start the Alios process here. We, have, uh, we are very committed to carrying forward his legacy in any which way we can. Uh, and uh, you know, this whole 
uh, you know, I call it the Franco Luso Goen legacy, uh, of which he is very much uh, a part. And uh, anyone who would like to hold any kind of event in his memory or can anything associated with him, uh, of course, we are very, very, uh, we would be very, very uh, happy to host the event in these premises. Uh, thank you, a special thank you to Mr. Luke Pereira for having thrown open uh, the doors of this beautiful house to the Adios process, which has thrown open the doors to many, many opportunities for all of us. And uh, with these words, I would like to say they are very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nagara, and I'm sure that we'll take you up on that offer <laughs> for uh, assisting in, uh, in events related to festival. Now, uh, before we end, I would invite anyone uh, from the audience who would like to share uh, just a little anecdote or an experience uh, that you've had with uh, festival Naranya, if you want to say something. Yeah, please introduce yourself and speak. I'm Thomas, Thomas Rodriguez from Diwara. So I know Pensuar in 79. There, there was some film going on in the world war. It was a big and, 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 uh, The mic a little closer. Yeah, and you come around a little close to me. I mean, I don't know what the can be there. And if for anything is to call me, I did others from this thing with me. And I was having a camera of my uncle. It was gifted to me, okay? And that was back in my film institute. So then uh, we have to take some few films, I mean shots. And we are having some small program and the shooting is going all over. And that time he introduced me to Benchwal. So like he's my cousin, I don't know, he's related to me. And he described his house in some guys, so budget, which was house as well for the child for some time. So I said, yeah, fine. You know, so very often on Saturdays, Sundays and all, he used to, after that he used to take me to the hill behind all the churches and then he described me as a holy city once. It was called Siddha Gedua, or Siddha, the big city. And you are describing many things like, you know, this means, that means, and we took me away and away. For me it was only one bhaji and tato, okay, and puris. Otherwise it's Purina. Purina again from Samathais. That's how they played the PW. The meeting point was at PW. From there, I was having a Royal Enfield. So he used to tell me, Are you Royal Enfield? Yeah, I can't go there. Yeah, so I'm going to go there. And at our tent, the Bhai was there. He was giving a message after the mass. Thomas, Fanyar and I, I was just there. And I was having Royal Enfield at that time. Although I was maybe very young. And that Royal Enfield has to take anywhere. The only road was the Kadamba road that time. You know, otherwise there was no roads. Uh, it was a full jungle and in the daytime it was, I have seen, you know, the back leopards. Bipte Vag Mdabete and Kohle Mdunna Ning Sorok Nizaritnaka. So few films today which has been surfaced, which I have seen after maybe 30 years or beyond. It is my photograph, you know which never, he never was bothered to take credit for him, although I was not. For me it is Bhaji Puri and Tato or Bosli. Because then that he used to develop it, you know, opposite uh, Bosli, that is one, what do you call that? Modena. 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 No, 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 no. Hollywood no, studio. Hollywood studio. Madhav was to be here. I know the son. He would be. Yeah, about Bosli. Yeah, about Bosli. So, yeah, the lady used to be there. He used to develop and finish it. After some time, he used to tell me, Thomas, just see what you have to get out For me, it was an negligence. And he never had thought of taking credit to him. After that, Tahir, you know, Tahir, ESI. So after that, I came to know it was all photograph was given to ESI. And he was that, not a thing like not to have a credit for him. Although he spent so much and he used to take me, it was a punishment for this at that time, you know, he's calling me at this time, he's uh, evening and all. And uh, after that, even uh, that what Konkur, when we have passed through that Karambodi, you know, lake. lake. 
that time we we photograph lot of photograph. That time it was color. So what I was saying is that he was very much passionate to document or to preserve, you know, conserve many things which are gone to him. What was on the hill? Ruins, a lot of ruins. And he was telling me, Thomas, this is not only seven, eight monuments, what we see there. There were many monuments. He was describing almost more than 37, 38. Which uh, after that I was very much this thing, you know, to have all this thing. And uh, we had so many meetings with the SI to him. And some of them they have put some boats and all to preserve certain sites and all, but still the new builders have bulldozed everything. There is big fortification in Old Goa, starting from the old hospital to be reached to my neighbor's church. It is almost 21 or plus fortification. So his dream was, you know, to conserve this and he knew many things. He was getting a lot of charts, you know, old charts, which has been you know, painted by various you know, painters and all. So he brought a lot of information about this and he, he was very much, he said like somebody had to do something for all this. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like the guy that you were referring to three days ago, unfortunately he passed away. But anyway, <laughs> bye from the uh, Yeah, bye. So uh, is there anybody else who would... Hello, uh, good evening everyone. I'm hearing dates like 95 and 79. So I have a humble 2007. I know Mr. Wilson. Tell us your name. My name is, yes, uh, coming to that. My name is Devansh Chaudhara. I'm a resident of Panjim. i uh, done my engineering, but my passion has been astronomy. And that was the reason with my, for my association with Mr. Wilson. 2007, I met him for the first time. He was delivering a lecture on how he found the remains of Queen Ketavan and he informed the government and they contacted Georgia. That intrigued me of how detailed he went into studying uh, the history. But I was surprised when he also gave eloquently detailed uh, lecture on astronomy. I was a 11, 12 year old boy at that time and uh, he invited us for the upcoming eclipse in 2007 at Junta House. So then I went and I saw all the senior people, uh, all the astronomers there were working with the observatory, all the volunteers basically. They were very senior. We had people like Govind Sir. Uh, there were no kids who were handling the staff at the observatory. Surprised, next year, 2008, I saw an advertisement in the paper saying that inviting astro kids to the observatory. And that was the first time the observatory opened those two kids. And I joined the first batch of astro kids and uh, it was a wonderful experience of one year learning uh, astronomy and uh, learning stargazing. Frequently visited by Percival Sir, sharing his experiences and his story of why he started astronomy with an inspiration from the kids that he had met in Portugal who called themselves Amigos de Astronomy and he had started Friends of Astronomy here in Goa but at that time all the adults were taking the responsibilities. So those were thrown open to the kids and uh, we learned astronomy for one year dedicatedly under the Astro Kids batch of 2008-2009 and then we were given an opportunity to be guides at the observatory. Now all the seniors, all the adults were taking the responsibilities. Every evening foreigners used to come, guests used to come from all across India. Sometimes even astronomers used to come to see the observatory and we had adults showing them the stars and focusing the telescope. Now Sir so said that kids who have learned already astronomy should take up this responsibility and will also get a chance to earn the pocket money. So I got the opportunity to be a guide. And one fine night, some, un, you can say, unlucky day for me, uh, Cassiopeia is a constellation which is M in shape. It was rising, so it was not completely horizontal to look like an M. And I was a 13-year-old boy, 
uh, could not understand that it's a rising, so it's vertical. And to me, when it was vertically oriented, it looked like Scorpio. <laughs> so I told a visitor who came that this is Scorpio, and then after 45 minutes, I see it's become horizontal and it's not Scorpio. The seniors present silently heard my explanation to the visitors and directly that same night made a rush to Percival Sir's house with a complaint that the kids are telling wrong information at the observatory. I came to know of the same through another senior of mine who said that the meeting was called the same night at Percival Sir's house and uh, they are considering closing down uh, the guide duties for the kids and no more, so you cannot come any longer to the observatory because you have already completed your Asho Kids course. So if Percival Sir says no more kids, I won't have anything to do. I have to wait till I become an adult or, or come practice, practice, practice till I get the opportunity again, but again when I'll be an adult. So we were very scared. I told the other Asho Kids of what has happened and then we got the news from Percival that let the kids make mistakes. That was the happy, happiest moment for all of us kids who were taking duty. Uh, two of us, myself and another friend of mine, Nitish Fatalbekar, we were both 13 years old when we started the duty. By the time we were 15, we had bought our first astrophotography camera with the pocket money we earned working at the observatory. So that was how much motivation uh, we had. And that much positivity we were welcomed with at the observatory. Uh, it has truly shaped me what I am today. Uh, all my uh, public speaking skills, all my confidence and my knowledge in astronomy of course is due to Percival Sir's insistence that let the kids make mistakes. If he had not said that and he had not upheld the decision because there were seniors who were working their entire, like Govin Sir and other many seniors, but they were working through their entire youth and to the adulthood and they are, they had actually worked on the ground so their opinion would have hold more respect but Prasiva said that let the kids do what they are doing so that was uh, my experience with Prasiva apart from any other experiences we had really good experience with Prasiva sir and Jayant Nalika sir came to Goa 2009 International Year of Astronomy uh, we had invited Jayant Nalika sir to Goa and we had a grand function both in Kalai Dami and in NIO so at that time we had more many close encounters with Percival. Throughout the day he was with the kids doing all the preparations. So that's what I would like to share. Thank you. Thank you so much, Devansh. How interesting that was. Uh, is there anybody else? Just here. Okay. Yeah. You can speak from there if you want. Yeah. Whatever you want. I'm Mario D'Souza. My association with uh, Percival is that I am married to his niece and so I have spent a number of perhaps days, weeks and months with uh, Percival and have, have many happy memories of his house. I want to add to what all has been said because so much has been said and so much more to be said but just I want to mention one particular attribute that really impressed me about Percival but perhaps will not come out to that extent but that's the reason for his success. And I think that was his integrity. Whatever he did, he had that honesty about it. Whether it was, uh, there was no smooth talk. He knew how to call a spade a spade. Whether it was telling the priests that they had misappropriated the funds or the furniture or the statues in the church, or it was the government official who uh, uh, you know, had uh, acted wrongly or had misappropriated funds, or even if it was the, in, uh, what we call the invasion of Goa, uh, in fact he had no wants to uh, say what he really felt. And I think that is that spirit of integrity is really something that made him uh, go, whatever task he took up, whether it, uh, it was very ex extremely well done, well researched, well presented, financial uh, accounts were well presented, and he was a perfectionist to the core. And I think that spirit of integrity is something that was largely responsible for the success in other fields. So, uh, I think we'll now wind up this very nice uh, memorial meeting that we've had. Thank you all of you once more for coming here. And uh, I think in order to keep Persava Naranya's memory alive, it's not just having this one meeting, 
but I think what we need to do is do something more. So there have been ideas that have been floated. Uh, one, of course, is uh, uh, having his rich collection of books and papers and uh, you know all the material that he has uh, in a special kind of place in the Goa University Library so that the, uh, it, it becomes available to scholars and researchers and those, those books can really have a second lease of life with people who need them. Uh, there is another idea that once a year we organize a memorial lecture. May not be actually on his birthday because of the, of, of the weather, but once a year on, you know, invite a good speaker who will come and speak on some issues that were dear to him on, on history, on heritage, on culture, on astronomy, on whatever. So we have a memorial lecture once a year, maybe at the university in an auditorium, so this will be open to people. So these are ideas, and if any of you have ideas, please feel free to share them with us, and also your willingness to help organize, because it's one thing having ideas, but then those, uh, those ideas require a lot of people to volunteer their time in order to be able to organize these things. So, yes. So that, so, so that is something I invite any of you to share your ideas and to, to, to offer to help if you think you have the time to give. Uh, with that, I think we'll, we'll close today's meeting. Thank you very much for coming. A special thank you once more to Ariane Frances for, for, for hosting us over here and also to our sponsors, uh, Inavo, Kotombi and uh, Adinko. Uh, I invite you all to share what they have to offer to us. Yeah. Thank you very much.